Hello, everyone. This is Demia Avery in conjunction with ConnectCapeFear.com. And we have some very special guests with us today. We have James Brindle today and Johnny Faust. How are you? Great. How about yourself? We're doing wonderful. They are from Farm Bureau Insurance, and I cannot wait to talk to them. So let's get into it. Is that okay? So why don't you guys tell us about your roles with the company and the problems you solve for your customers? Yeah, so uh, first of all, thanks for having us. Uh, good to be here. Um, James Brindle, been with the company uh, November of 2013. Uh, agent, I mean, they technically say we're part of marketing, but we're, we're sales agents. I mean, we are insurance agents. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, our, our job is to uh, to build our clientele base, but to, you know, protect them in all, in all walks of life. Mm. So I'm uh, not as seasoned as James is, but I've been an agent since June of 22. Okay. Uh, I have been in the insurance industry for going on four and a half years now. Mm -hmm. uh, both of us actually, our background is the hospitality industry. Okay. So we've, we've actually been able to bring a lot of that aspect into what we do for people now. Mm -hmm. uh, both of us were in the restaurant business and you know, I, I say I've gone from helping people one meal at a time for hopefully the rest of their life now. So. Now, that is very interesting. So you said the hospitality. Um, were you in restaurants as well? Mm -hmm. um, James? Yeah. Yeah. He uh, he was at Fish Bites. I was at Buffalo Wild Wings and Monkey Junction. So we actually have known each other since uh, probably about the summer of 2010. So we've known each other a long time. Okay. Uh, and been friends. And uh, he was actually clients. And uh, him and his wife and family were clients of mine. And then <clears throat> he transitioned over time to, to join us at, at Farm Bureau. So, yeah, both, both very restaurants. Very nice. Very nice. So, how was that transition? Because that's total, two total different things there. How was the transition? I mean, for me, honestly, I felt like it was a pretty smooth transition just mm -hmm. simply for the fact that, like I was saying, I mean, it's, it's helping people, you know, it's. My role at, at Fish Bites was more of, you know, I started off as a server, moved up to becoming manager and just kind of helping, you know, solve a problem. And that's really all insurance is, is solving someone's problem to give them the best coverage that they have, whether that's life insurance, uh, you know, auto, home, whatever it is. And I, I hate to say it, but kind of sticking to your guns and not being like, we're not going to underinsure your home. We're going to give you the quality coverage that you need. Right. Um, so it's kind of transitioned well for me. Plus, I feel like a lot of our regulars have become clients of ours, too. So, right. you know, people trusted us in the restaurant business and now they trust us in our, you know, future endeavor as well. So Nice. So if you guys could tell us. Um, did you, you have anything to add to that? Thing? Uh, just briefly. I mean, just piggyback on what Johnny said. I mean, uh how do you transition? I mean, if you're if you're in the restaurant business, you got to be able to talk to people, and yeah. you got to be able to be quick on your feet. You got to be able to problem solve. You have to be able to talk, communicate, all those things. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, uh, slinging chicken wings and making <laughs> sure everybody's beers cold and the right football games on is a little different than looking at an insurance portfolio. But again, yeah. if you're talking to those people, uh, and you know, yeah, you just have to be able to talk to people. And, you know and so, what? Yeah. Also, the, the customer service aspect of everything of having to be able to deal with different uh, personalities, right? Things like that. I'm sure that that helped a lot with that. For sure. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll take that one. I'll let you chime in, John. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, if you if you service your people in the right way, uh, probably about 90% of the time you're going to be okay. But there's, there's going to be hiccups. There's going to be situations where, uh, you know, you get thrown a curveball or you get put in situations that just make you feel uncomfortable. But uh, yeah. he alluded to earlier, you know, you just got to be firm in what you believe in and know that we work for a great company uh, that is going to back us, you know, 100 percent of the time. So, you know, do your part, attention to detail, document, and, yeah. and you'll be OK. Love it. So what do you love about your job? What do you love about what you do? I, I, I think the blessing and the curse is the freedom that you have as an insurance agent. Um, you know, you're a 1099 employee, so you're your own boss. You come and go as you please. But I, I think what I love about it is kind of what I alluded to as my customer service portion. I love just helping people. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm fortunate enough. I mean, I'm sure he probably has, you know, a lot more to say about this than I do because I haven't really had anybody have a total loss or anything like that. But to see a family that's, you know, like we've got going on in the western part of the state right now, you know, seeing families just lose everything they have. And to know that, you know, alluding to what he said, too, to stick to your guns and say, look, this is the coverage that you need. At the end of the day, I don't think that person's ever going to come back to you and go, why did you tell me to put my coverage right. where it is? Right. Um, so to, to know that in the worst time of someone's life, 
that you could be, you know, the, the biggest helper for that family to be able to make it through that event and be able to get back to some sort of normalcy. You know, that kind of helps me sleep at night and gives me the, the why, you know, besides my family, obviously, but you know, my why is to make sure that I'm protecting as many families as I can with the proper coverage. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, I, well, I could talk about this for a long time, but I'll, I'll keep it <clears throat> kind of short. Um, it, probably for me, it's the people. Uh, you know, just like in the restaurant business, you build relationships and, you know, I'll run into people. I'll run into like old regulars or I'll go into Buffalo Wild Wings and they'll see me and they'll ask me how things are. And, they'll, you know, they always ask, they're like, do you miss it? No, I don't yeah. miss that. And, you know, probably, you know, another 20 years from now, you know, if I'm fortunate enough, well, I miss working in the insurance business, probably not the actual working aspect of it, but the people, I mean, I'm, you know, the relationships that you build and the conversations that you have. And, you know, and I don't like saying that I have customers. I like to say that I have clients and I like to service the policies that I write. Yeah. And so it's about building that rapport and that trust and, you know, in a, in a, in a service industry, a little different in an insurance industry, you, you know, trust people trust you and if they trust you they'll tell their friends they'll tell their neighbors they'll tell family and then all of a sudden and you just it just you know turns into an avalanche of an opportunity and that's that's why we do what we do i love that now if you could tell us like there are so many different insurance companies out there and there's so many you know so many choices so many things what would you say that would make farm bureau unique what is what is the unique thing about you uh it, we're local uh, you know, I mean, I think in times of change, I've been in Wilmington 21 years, uh, and, you know, people say shop local, support small business. Well, yeah, we are an insurance company. We're a big insurance company, but we're only in the state of North Carolina. We have other companies, uh, you know, in other parts of the country, you know, South Carolina, Virginia, Florida, a lot of states have farm bureaus. Um, you know, I think I learned doing it as long as I have in 2018 when Florence hit Southeastern North Carolina, uh, the impact and, you know, people that. Before that happened, older guys that I worked with had been doing a long time. They're like, you know, nobody wants to have a hurricane, but they're like, wait till we have a hurricane and you'll see how strong mm. of a company you work for. Mm. And, you know, when you can show up and you can deliver and, you know, make those promises, but also, you know, don't over, don't over promise, you know, under deliver and, or, uh, you know, yeah, I said that right. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that's why, again, that's why we do what we do, mm -hmm. um, but we're local. And it, and it starts at the top and, you know, the people above us, you know, everybody says, you know, don't judge until you walk a mile in their shoes. Well, you know, our boss, he was an agent. His yeah. boss was an agent. So going all the way up to the to the highest level in Raleigh, those guys, you know, they've walked in our shoes. It might have been 15 years ago, but that's why we're so strong and, and the communication and the backbone is there. Love it. So the um, services that you offer. So is it. When I looked up Farm Bureau, is it just auto? Is it is it auto life? What 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 type of services do you guys offer? If if it's insurance, for the most part, Farm Bureau can offer it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you touched on a couple: auto, homeowners, okay. uh, life insurance, uh, disability insurance, health insurance. I mean, the the main ones, you know, Farm Bureau is. You know we're we're big on especially um, auto and home, and then of course our, our life insurance company is uh, bar none one of the best mm. you're going to find out there. I mean we're a we're a, a collective of about eleven states, but that's what gives us that financial strength yeah. as a life insurance company that we know if God forbid something happens to somebody, mm -hmm. we're we're paying out the policy. I yeah. mean obviously if there's some sort of criminal whatever involved, obviously they're going to want to get information on that regarding it, but. If it's a cut and dry, God forbid something happens to a family member, Farm Bureau is going to do what they can do to get that money to them as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. So if I, uh, you mentioned something that, that struck a chord with me, meaning that you have to work with a lot of different people. Um, what happens when disaster strikes? Like how close do you guys um, feel for the actual customer? Gosh, you went through Florence. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's an all hands on deck approach. I mean, you have to be, it's so hard in those situations. It's it's hard to me because you, when you have a book of business and you have so many clients, you know, and in, in a case like that, I mean, I can remember having claims filed and people, and, you know, they always ask, they're like, you know, is your house livable? Can you give us a scale of one to five? How bad is the damage? 
Yeah. Um, you know, and everybody's opinion on that's going to be different. I mean, I was filming phone calls in 2018. People were upset because they had a tree on their fence in their backyard and they couldn't let their dog go out in the backyard and use mm. the bathroom. I wow. also had people with trees laying in their living room. So, you know, you have to look at it from that from that aspect and say, OK, you know, again, are we moderate? It's a de mass devastation there, but it's it becomes an opportunity that you can go and see those people firsthand. And, you know, I I walked some property lines in 2018 that with people out in, uh, you know, out in the Hampstead area mm -hmm. uh, and Rocky Point that had two story, you know, their, their homes were two story homes and they had water in the second floor of their house. Wow. Uh, you know, and when I'm walking these properties, it's it's 30 days after the actual storm hit and so you know the waters come back down but it's all hands on deck and then, you know we have adjusters we bring in additional adjusters and right now obviously the western part of the state is seeing mass devastation so there will be adjusters uh not necessarily agents but there will be adjusters and other people within farm bureaus uh claims office in this part of the state and other parts of the eastern part of the state that will go to the western part of the state and help yeah. uh, and you know we have a call center we got an email this morning that call center has been up and running for a week and a half now it'll continue to stay open probably through this weekend mm. uh, and working extended hours to make sure those people get claims. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an all hands on deck and you know, every, not one person's more important than the other, but the line of communication is, is very important there. Yeah. Did you have anything to add to that? I, I'm not really. I mean, he's been doing it so long. I mean, yeah. shoot, he was my agent for a while. So I trust <laughs> everything he says because he helped me out with during Florence as well. I mean, you know, I, luckily I was just one of those that just, Shot him a text message because yeah. I, I knew how busy he probably already was. It was just like, hey, man, got shingles laying all mm -hmm. over the place. So, yeah, I mean, and it, it, that was just kind of that was part of what, you know, made me even start thinking a couple of years later that I wanted to become a Farm Bureau agent just simply for the fact. I mean, we haven't really talked about it, but he helped me out a lot when it came to me wanting to transition from the restaurant business. And I went into straight life insurance with another company. But. Um, you know, he was kind of a mentor for me about a lot of stuff. And, you know, I look up to him a lot about, you know, the, and I go to him for a lot of questions because <laughs> uh, he has been doing it so long and he has walked in those shoes for a long time. So, you know, him being my agent to start and I trusted everything he said with me at that point. And, you know, I've taken a lot of what I've done with clients and base it off of kind of how our relationship was, even though I, I knew him personally. You know the professional aspect of it sometimes that personal relationship makes that professional aspect a little more difficult yeah um but being able to keep that barrier of of you know keeping those two separate but also with all of our clients the honesty that you have to give someone and like he's saying yeah the transparency and just being able to when there is something that's devastating going on uh you know just trying to help them out as much as you personally can but stay out of the way of the adjuster at the same time yeah you know i think that's a key thing that we have to balance is a lot of people you know if they don't hear from their adjuster in 20 minutes they want you to you know reach out to them and give them a call i said well hey pump the brakes give them an opportunity so you kind of ground them a little bit say yeah. hey look you know I, you know we've, there's a lot going on you know if you don't hear from them in x amount of time you know i, I will be more than happy to step in and just kind of put something out there and i don't know if that's kind of what he does or how how he does it but um i mean the only thing i would add to that just be patient i mean again during florence mass chaos just like it is in the western part of the state right now so just patience is a hard thing for people in those situations to try to have and we all understand that but if you can be patient again you know we'll we're going to take care of our clients and we're going to take care of our people and, you know, as our, as our powers to be and always say, you know, bad time or bad circumstances, but this is where we shine against our yeah. competition. Now, we going back to what you guys were saying at the beginning with the hospitality thing. And I was mentioning as far as customer service, I'm a big advocate for customer service, big advocate. So how important is, is your customer service to your to your clients how important is that to you i mean a hundred percent yeah i mean we're not any different than you know uh john and jane's uh you know insurance shop mom and pops i mean i'm not i'm not gonna mention any of the other big competitors out there mm -hmm. uh out of respect for them but i mean we're no i mean the type of policies that we're gonna write and the coverages that we offer aren't any different yeah uh you know it's like if you want to go buy a tv you know you're going to go and you're going to say, okay, Samsung, Sony, LG, and then there's going to be the lesser brand. I mean, you know, TV still got a job to do. 
it's a TV. Right. And insurance companies the same way, but it's just, you know, there's the proof in the pudding. You're going to get what you pay for. Uh, and, you know, again, uh, a lady that she's a client of mine now, but I've known her for a few years. Um, you know, she says that she service what she sells. And I think that's huge. Yeah. Uh, you know, we get my cell phone number. All my clients have my cell phone number. And, you know, I tell them, like, you know, you call me if you need me. If it's something simple, you can call the office. But it's not a we're not a we're not a transactional business. We're a relationship business. I love that. And that goes um a tribute to what the question that I wanted to ask you guys. So how is your company making the Cape Fear region like a better a better place? Uh, you know, as a whole, I think Farm Bureau, I mean, the Cape Fear region, I, I kind of going into what he was saying, we are local. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the things that we're doing, we're, we're, we sponsor, you know, he, he does a lot with Ashley uh, programs, the sports programs. You know, some of us do some with Hogger. We do a lot with UNCW and we're branching out to, you know, the different uh, high schools in the region just to kind of help boost up, you know, a lot of their funds and things like that. So that, that's nice. kind of been our approach this year. You know, because we know that uh, the high schools, you know, they, they do have a lot of fundraising and a lot of boosting. But, hey, you know what? A, another booster to go out there and help the community is, is not a bad thing. So yeah. um, that, that's kind of where, where we are with it a lot of times. I know we're doing a lot for sending stuff out west for the western part of the state. and We're collecting money and donations and things like that for stuff that's going out to, um, you know, Swannanoa and, and Asheville and all those areas that just got you know, decimated. Slammed. Oh yeah. man, it's, it's, it's awful what's happened out there. And I mean, you know, they, this is the first time a lot of those people have seen anything like that probably ever. Now, have um, you guys been getting a lot of calls about, um, any devastation that's happened out like in Nashville or anything like that? Uh, just, I mean, a little bit. I mean, I mean, I, <clears throat> I, I can't speak for Johnny. I've got a few clients that live here locally, but they have, you know, mountain houses, secondary homes and, mm. and the ones that I have talked to so far, no claims, um, you know, that, that, they were okay and they were fortunate in that aspect, but you know, Hey, they can't, there's no power there. They can't access it. <clears throat> um, but you know, not as much as you might think, but again, that's because, you know, a lot of that stuff's being redirected to that part of the state, uh, that call center, um, and things like that. I mean, you know, it would be, if it was the other way around again, not to, not to continue to go down that road, but 2018 with Florence, I mean, holy cow, September 14th, I think is when that thing made landfall. And I mean, that was a 90 day from that until the end of 2018, about 80% of what we were doing was servicing those claims, working those claims, uh, you know, supplementing claims, mm -hmm. you know, we were still writing some new business and, and things like that, but it was a very focused on that natural disaster at the time. And the Western part of the state right now is going to be the same. Yeah. Um, and just to piggyback how we're getting out there in the community again, doing it a long time. Uh, maybe even before Johnny joined us. I mean, we've done things in the past for uh, like Toys for Tots, um, Nourish NC, nice. uh, Coat Drives at Christmas. Um, you know, and, and being self-employed, we can kind of go and do what we want and take it and run with it. But as an office, you know, again, like you said, doing stuff for UNCW, a lot of us are alumni. Um, so doing so is stuff that the one <clears throat> for that's that's mostly near and dear to you? Is the, is UNCW. the UNCW one? Uh, you know, I don't think I would put any of them ahead of the other one. I mm -hmm. mean, we just... We, we want to be seen in the community, but we want to be seen for all the right reasons. Uh, right. You know, I think insurance salesmen sometimes, insurance people, agents can be kind of like car salesmen. You don't, you're just like, oh man, there's James. <laughs> I don't want to talk to him right now. And so, you know, to be able to have those non, you know, if I see a client in the grocery store, it's not going to be like, hey man, we need to get in the office and talk about your home insurance. Like, it's like, hey man, how are the kids? You know, did you watch the game the other night? You know, family's good. Yeah. You, you don't want to be there's a time and place for those conversations, uh, you know, and so doing a lot <clears throat> um, with Ashley High School, they're doing a lot with Hogger. You know, we'd like to expand on New Hanover and Laney as well. Okay. Um, but doing stuff with their student athletes, um, you know, just getting our name out there, but also, you know, we want to be seen in the community for the right reasons. And piggybacking off of what you just said, what, what would you say would be the biggest misconception <clears throat> about insurance sales? Well, I, I, one thing that I wanted to mention, too, that I was thinking about that I've, I've liked to implement into my daily activity is kind of like what he's saying. When I see people out in public, you know, I want my little thought in my head now is when people think about Johnny, I don't want them to think about insurance. But when people think about insurance, I want them to think about Johnny. Johnny. 
Got it. You know, so, mm-hmm. and, and I think that's important because yeah. I don't want somebody like he's saying, see me come walking up the grocery store and duck and run the other <laughs> way. It's not like, oh God, she's going to bring up that life insurance. You know, I, I don't want that to be the case. Mm-hmm. I, want, I want, you know, more people to, to view us as we're here to help. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, and I think, um, you know, coming from the service background, I hate to keep bringing this up, but, you know, I feel like a lot of times, you know, not necessarily all insurance or, or, or our company or any company in particular, but I think when, when people would walk into a restaurant, you know, a lot of times they feel like that server is going to try to upsell them so they can get a bigger tip. Yeah. Um, and, and I think maybe people feel like when you're quoting their home or something like that, when you're putting their coverages where they actually need to be, they're viewing it as, oh, well, they're trying to just make this coverage higher so they can get a better commission or whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, I think what what sets us apart is we do take the time to sit down with the client and review their coverages. And, you know, like like I said before, dig our heels in. We don't really back down and go, OK, yeah, let's drop it $100,000 so I can get this, yeah. this person. I mean, that that's not really you know, that's not what we're in the business of doing, because at the end of the day, we drop it any amount. And you have a devastating thing happen, like what's happened, unfortunately, in the western part of the state, or even if it was, a, you know, another major hurricane that comes through the area. The last part of that conversation they're ever going to remember is you dropping their coverage down a hundred thousand mm, dollars. You know, so uh, so like he's saying, documenting, kind of going through all of that, just you know, making that customer service aspect kind of our what we highlight rather than focusing on premium and everything like that obviously premium is important everybody's struggling right now yeah. but at the end of the day how much more struggle would it be if your home burned to the ground and you didn't have the coverage to rebuild it right you know right. so i don't know if you have anything to add to that but um uh, no I mean, you, <clears throat> your question it was just misconception yeah yeah i mean <clears throat> he did he did a good job answering that i mean i don't really have a whole lot to add to that i mean that's a uh, again just you know when people i think sometimes people uh and I understand why they do it, but, um, you know, say, say you call and you say, James, uh, I'd like you to review my home and auto. Okay. Well, you know, the easiest thing is for that, that potential client, uh, do you have copies of your existing policy? Can you just email? Do you feel comfortable emailing that to me? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a problem. They send it over and then you can see where they've taken the Sharpie and they mark out all the costs on everything. And I, I mean, wow. I get why they do it, but it, yeah. I've been doing it long enough now that I almost take that as an insult because I'm not going to undercut you. Right. I'm gonna, I'm, I tell people that I'm like, I'm going to give you an apples to apples and then I'm going to point things out to you and say, you need better coverage here. You need better coverage here. Or you can tweak this and it might only cost $5 more a year. Yeah. So being transparent, being honest, being genuine. I mean, that's what, you know, that's what people, uh, that's what they remember about you. you know, and not what you say or anything like that. It's you know, how you make them feel. And exactly. Exactly. And I'm glad you brought that up because I used to be in PR. So one of the things I know is that when people can trust the person they trust the product so i have a personal question to ask both of you guys it's not too personal it's not too bad it's not too bad um just give me one maybe one of your successes that you have and that you know that you might want to share any success that you have or an accomplishment that you had while doing insurance uh just longevity honestly i mean if you i mean this business will chew you up and spit you out <clears throat> yeah. uh you know i don't know off the top of my head i mean i mean i started in november of 2013 in our office alone mm-hmm. i've probably seen a dozen people come and go yeah uh you know and so i was i was the low man there for a long time and as far as longevity in our office i'm the longest tenured agent in our office mm. um yeah, I mean, I, I think that just speaks because you know there's there's ups and downs, and you know, you you gotta you gotta persevere and just be consistent in your day in and day out operations of what you do. If you're not being consistent, it's going to be really a struggle because you know insurance and the way the insurance business works is you know again you might get your renewal. Say you're with XYZ company, you get your renewal tomorrow. Well, that's you're still 45 days out. Yeah. So you need to work really hard to get rolling. And then, you know, so once you get rolling and you call and you say, yeah, James, you know, I, I'd like to switch my car insurance over. You're like, okay, cool. We can handle that. When's it renew? All it doesn't renew until uh, December 1st. You're mm-hmm. like, okay, mm-hmm. but I got enough going between now and then that I'm fine. Yeah. And that takes a lot of hard work. Uh, you know, there's <laughs> my, 
my dad said that my grandfather said we had a family business growing up and he said you know you can work eight hours you can play eight hours you just can't make it the same eight hours and so i think when you go to work you got to work when you're not at work you know that's your downtime but just be consistent in your daily processes and for me it's longevity i mean there's a lot again i could talk for hours on certain individuals and people that have influenced me but it's just longevity for me that quote who'd you say that told you that quote your dad or your grandfather uh my grandfather you know he was always obviously retired by the time i was old enough to really understand those things but i mean my dad used to say i got uh, a picture on my in my office of all of them and that's what it was it's, there's you know eight hours you can work you can play don't make it the same eight hours love it yeah. love it how about you i think for me more of what mine has been is you know it's it's really hard to explain in a sentence and put my thoughts together but it's like you know being from the restaurant business people are coming to you to make sales Mm -hmm. whereas in this industry yeah we are a well-known company but you still have to go out there actually when i was getting the the role as an agent from being an associate agent um you know i kept saying oh well they're in the office they're in the office and uh (laughs) the dsm said you know what you can stand in the garage that doesn't make you a car so at the end of the day, you, know, you, <laughs> you can be in the office all you want, but if you're not generating any business or doing or servicing any policies to try to find other referrals from those people, then you're really not doing anything. But, um, you know, when it comes down to it, I think uh, one of the other things that I like to say a lot is, you know, don't let the highs get too high or the lows get too low. I try to stay as even kill as I can, whether that's, you know, through you know, tragedies and storms and things like that, or whether it's, you know, I, I had a, a bad month or a, a great month. I just try to say, Hey, you know what? It's October 1st. I'm back to zero. The last month doesn't matter. You know, I, and I just try to move forward with that. So me personally, I think more of what mine is, I, I wouldn't say like him, any specific achievements. It's just the fact of being able to just go in there every day. You know, we like to say grind and, and do what we have to do to, to, you know, protect as many people as we can. Love it. Now, how can people find you? How can they get started if they wanted to get an insurance policy with you guys? Uh, social media is a big part of it. And then that's why we're here with you today. Uh, yeah. So we're getting blasted out there. But, you know, I think, <laughs> um, you know, not you can Google, but <clears throat> our office, so there's two farm bureau offices in town. Our office right now is over on the corner of Independence and Park. Okay. Uh, right next to uh, MP Park and the fire station. But we are moving into a brand new building. I uh, keep going down Independence, going uh, south uh, next to the Wilmington Surgical Center. Mm-hmm. So it's already there. The building next to it, I mean, it's up. They're finishing the inside, and we will be in there by December 1st. Um, but, yeah, I mean, social media, we're most all of us, uh, it's not required, but most all of us have a Facebook page. We have a business Facebook page. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, we're Farm Bureau Insurance. Love it. Love it. Now, is there anything else that we didn't cover? that I want to make sure that everybody knows about Farm Bureau. So we want to know, is there anything else that we didn't cover? You know, I, I think just for us, just kind of reiterating that um, that face-to-face interaction, yeah. you know, I, I know especially the younger generations are moving more towards doing a lot of the stuff online and just getting to where they're setting up their own policies. And, uh, you know, uh, it kind of I thought about something while we were talking a little bit ago. And so many people come in, and I, and I get times are tough. I yeah. mean, people are struggling rates are going up for everything, your eggs are going up, your gas is going up, rates aren't coming down, costs aren't coming down for anything. Right. But I think the important thing, and, I, and I'm not saying other companies don't do it, but for me personally, you know, my personal testimony is I bring so many people in that, oh man, how do I, how do I bring this cost down? Yeah. But then once you take the time to actually explain to them what those coverages mean, a lot of times you end up bringing the premium up. Just simply for the fact of you kind of explain to them what would happen if they were to have a catastrophic event, you know, whether that's driving down the road and they cause serious bodily injury to somebody or yeah. or something along those lines. It just kind of, it puts them into perspective that, and I like to say a lot of times, I'm like, you know, this home, all these assets that you have that you busted your butt your whole life for, all it's going to take is one major accident and you could lose a lot of that. Yeah. You know, and I think it really puts people into perspective to realize that, oh, man, these guys, it's not just about a premium to them. It's about making sure that, you know, their family's protected or my family's protected. Um, So if there was some kind of catastrophic event that happened that I don't have to pay out of pocket for this, I don't have to struggle for it. I love that you guys always bring up about the people and how the caring part, because for me, that's what makes me want to to 
gravitate to your business. Because if I feel like I'm being just like sold to, I shut down. But if you show me that there's some connection there or something that you're interested in actually helping me, then I'm more apt to talk to you, you know? Yeah, I mean, people uh, do business with people that they know I can trust. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that face-to-face -face interaction or, again, not having a 1-800 number, you know, we're, uh, we're not a wizard. Uh, <laughs> we're not flow. <laughs> uh, you know, the type of policies those companies write are the same. But I mean, again, I think just getting educated and, uh, you know, I had, a, I had a young girl the other day on the phone. She just needed a runner's policy and she asked me if she could pay by Venmo. And to, and to go back to what Johnny's saying, I'm like, everything's just so technology driven, which is, a, I mean, technology's good, don't get me wrong. But I mean, just, you know, if, if People that need that insurance, unless they've been in the business, they're not an insurance agent. Just like I'm not a doctor, so if I don't feel good, I'm not going to self-diagnose myself reading stuff on the internet. So, right. you know, if you can go on the internet and create your own policy, chances are when you need something, it's not going to be there because you didn't talk to the expert. Mm. Uh, and I just think that that's, that's vitally important. Uh, you know, there's you see this devastation in the western part of the state, and, you know, there's, there's going to be some coverages there that are that are covered and there's going to be some things there that is not covered in your everyday policy unless you have specific endorsements or additional coverages for those things right. and your average person's not going to know that right they, they don't do it on a daily basis like we do so you know i think that's what separates us is you know you want the good honest review and know. tell us everything you know sure. keep it thorough with us the good and the bad we'll the ugly here's what we got <laughs> you know? so. awesome okay well if you guys don't have anything else Okay. Yeah. Well, we okay. want to thank James and Johnny for coming out today. And listen, we are out of here and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.